in this video, we're going to look at another problem about a callable bond, and it's actually an old actuarial exam problem from Bergman, 4.3.3s. We will be finding the actual annual yield rate that an investor earns on a callable bond that the investor buys in such a way as to guarantee a minimal desired annual yield rate, but the actual yield rate will be higher. So we've got a thousand par value bond pays annual coupons of 80, redeemable at par in 30 years, but callable, redeemable, according to the desires of the borrower, anytime at the end of the 10th year at 1,050. It's redeemable at par at the end of the term if they decide to do that at the end, but 1,050 otherwise if starting at year 10. Notice these are annual coupons as opposed to the usual semi-annual coupons. Based on her desired yield rate, an investor calculates the following potential purchase prices, P. One, assuming the bond is called at the end of the 10th year, the price will be 957. And two, assuming the bond is held until maturity, the price will be 897. Evidently, must be the case that the yield rates for these two things are the same, or approximately the same. We might want to double check that before we solve the problem. The investor buys the bond at the highest price that guarantees she will receive her desired yield rate, at least her desired yield rate, regardless of when the bond is called. The investor holds the bond for 20 years at which time the bond is called. Based on 20 years, n equals 20 because it's annual coupons, calculate the annual yield rate that the investor earns, which again will evidently be higher than the minimal yield rate that come from 1 and 2. All right, let's start by writing down what we know. F is 1,000. F times R is 80, so evidently R as an annual, effective annual yield rate would be 8%. These are annual coupons. C, the redemption amount, uh, has two possible values. It's 1,050. If N is 10, 11, 12, etc. through 29, and it's 1,000 because it says it's redeemable at par at the end if n equals 30. We are buying at a discount. Both of these p's are less than the redemption amount in either situation. So the worst case scenario for the investor is the bond is called as late as possible. Now before we um, go ahead and answer the question, Again, we want. I'm, I'm assuming that the uh, yield rates for these two choices, the potential purchase prices for which she calculates the minimal yield for, must be approximately the same. Let's double check that that really is true. I'm going to go ahead and write down the the uh, basic formula here. The price is F times R, which is 80. A, um, based on the, when the bond is called, 10 and some unknown yield rate, J, plus, again, if the bond is called at the end of the 10th year, the redemption amount is 10, 1, 1050, 1050, VJ to the 10th power. Didn't have to write that equation down, but just to help me in thinking about what to plug into my financial functions in the calculator, I'll go ahead and do that to calculate the yield rate. So let's see, N is 10 here. Plug in 10 for N. 957 is outgoing money. 957, put a negative sign in there. Put that in for PV. The 80 and the 1050 is incoming money for you, the investor. 80 should go into PMT as a positive quantity, and 1050 should go into FV as a positive quantity. Let's compute CPT, interest per year, and now it really is an interest per year. Don't double this. 8.999%, effectively 9%. 0%. Okay, let's check and see. Again, this is not technically part of the problem. You don't really have to do this, but just for your own peace of mind, let's check and see if the yield in this other situation is approximately the same. So 897 was the purchase price there. The coupons are still 80. Here we are assuming it's held until maturity, so N is 30. J is still unknown. Now the redemption amount is 1,000 instead of 1,050. Raise this to the 30th power. Use the financial functions to find J. So N is now 30. 
897 negative is PV. 80s PMT, 1000 is FV instead of 1050. Compute interest rate per year. Don't double it. Yeah, we are coming out at about 9% again. Close enough to count these as being effectively the same here for the purposes of this problem. All right, so that would be the yield based on those conditions. But what actually happens is the bond is called at year 20, n equals 20, again, the annual coupons. So we're assuming she buys the bond at the highest price that guarantees she's going to get her de at least desired her at least her desired yield of nine percent, meaning we want to assume she buys the the bond for eight ninety seven. That's the highest price that's going to guarantee a return of nine percent, no matter when the bond is called. If the bond is called some other time, the actual yield is going to be higher. What is the yield if the bond is called at time twenty? Again, it's not necessary to write this kind of equation, but if it helps you think about it, and for one thing, be careful that the redemption amount is 1,050, and that n is 20, go ahead and do it. So now when I use the financial function on the calculator, this should be the final answer to the problem, and it should be bigger than 9%. So now n is 20. 897 negative is PV. 80 is PMT, 1050 is FV compute interest per year. Yes, it is higher than 9%. It's 9.243%. And that is the correct answer. Okay, and again, this was an old exam problem. So you could have, you know, you could have saved yourself time by just doing this thing at the end, realizing she should pay 897 and just assuming based on what one and two say and based on the sentence that the yield in these two cases is the same effectively. But I thought it would be good to double check that and I suppose if you've got time on the exam you might want to double check it too just to feel more sure about what it really means.